and welcome to My Moment, the best unit for makeup and hair tutorial and also products review. Today I'm super excited to share with you a quick makeup tutorial, especially for beginners if you are going to school. And yes, it's almost time back to school if you enter into a middle school or high school man. I know that time it was like, oh, you try to fit in, you trying to look your best. And so I'm going to show you step by step how to achieve this makeup look. Very simple, but able to look beautiful throughout the day. And this makeup going to last you to where you don't have to touch up. So let's get started. Before I begin to do my makeup, it's important to prep, so I'm using Wet n Wild Lips Treatment. This product has a sense of a grapefruit, which is very interesting. Although it would not help my lip to stay soft throughout the day as most of the other products like a Carmax, but I just really enjoy the scents. The next essential step that I could not live without is using a moisturizing. This is very important whenever you want to have flawless and beautiful skin, especially soft. This Shishido Moisturizing Cream can be applied day and night. It is pretty thick, but once you apply it on your skin, it is really light. Majority of the time whenever I use the foundations that is matte finish, my skin tends to be more drier than ever. So that's why using a moisturizer before keeping my skin hydrated throughout the day and it would not peel or look cakey. Another skincare that is very important is applying sunscreen. The Neutrogena Ultra Sheer Sunscreen is one of my favorite sunscreens from the drugstore. It is super light and really nice to the touch. It does not leave my skin feeling greasy or shiny at the final finish. I usually rub the products against my hand to take out any white cast and I'm going to apply thoroughly all over my face and also my neck because that is going to be the first line of aging. I have tried multiple of different kind of eyebrows products and definitely this is have to be the best one that's going to help my eyebrows last the whole day which is the Anastasia Beverly Hill Bahame Eyebrows. This product will have to be paired with the angle brush in order to have a beautiful and natural strokes. I like to create an outline before I'm going to fill it in which means I'm going to draw out my eyebrows on the right and also going to do the same thing to the left. Make sure that both sides is going to be symmetrical. You want your eyebrows to look like sister instead of cousins. I was not blessed with a natural bushy eyebrow so I definitely have to fill it in and as you can see some part of my eyebrows I barely have any hair so I'm just going to use this product and draw it on top of my skins and it's going to last the whole day. I like to start out filling in toward the ends of my eyebrows and gradually work to the midsections and also toward the beginning which means that the most padded color is going to concentrate toward the end of my eyebrows leaving at the beginning of eyebrows to be lighter and it's going to create more natural looking eyebrows. Then I'm going to use the other ends which is the spoolie and brushing out any colors that did not stay into my eyebrows and any excess that falling out so I could able to reapply them at any missing spot. Before I'm going in with foundation, I definitely want to apply primers. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Minimizing Pores and I really like to apply at my nose sections because that's where I have a lot of pores and I try to really pack it in making the surface move and beautiful. I will use my ring fingers and press the products inward so it can able to fill in any empty space. I have a combination skin so majority of the oily will pack it at my t-zone which means that it's going to be a lot of pimple there so as a result it's going to have a lot of pores so I found that majority of the pores were located on my forehead, on my nose, and both sides of my nose so I really tried to pack it in. The benefit of using a primer is not going to reduce the look of pores, but also going to satisfy shine and control oil all day. Also help to smooth and prep the skin for makeup, and it does not cough your pores, water consistent, and leaving your skin feel soft. Currently, I am obsessed over this L'Oreal Inflatable Pro Matte Foundations. It is perfect for my skin tones and also has have a 24 hour matte finish, a full coverage foundation that won't flake and it looks so beautiful against my skin. It's oily free air light foundation which is going to resist sweat and it's not going to transfer. Also, it's going to control shine all day. Plus hide any imperfections and minimize the appearance of my pores. 
Rather than applying these products with a foundation brush, I really enjoy applying with a damp beauty sponge because the result, it looked like my skin but even better. The reason I like this product so much that it's going to look like this throughout the whole day and I don't have to do any touch up at all. The best way to apply liquid foundation and want the products to stay is actually to target in one section and work it out until the product is dry and set, then moving on to the next section instead of going all over the places. This is a great technique and must be applied especially if you are going to school or doing something important is to apply translucent powders right after you just apply foundations. This technique right here not only going to help your foundations last long, but also is going to soak up any oil that you have throughout the day and plus it's not going to transfer into your shirt or another person that you with. I apply a generous amount of translucent powders with a circling motion technique so I could apply the products evenly and it's going to cover all the surface that need to be covered. Instead of doing a full on makeup glam, I'm just going to target the part that I needed the most which is under my eyes to cover my dark circles and also some of my wrinkle. I'm going to apply right under my eyes and also the side using a damp beauty sponge that I used earlier and going to use the tips of the beauty sponge and using the middle fingers and press into the products and blend it out evenly. I want to create a lifted effect, that's why I'm going to bring the leftover products to the side of my face. Instead of using horizontal, I'm actually going to sweep it up. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, making sure both sides is going to be well blended. And once again, I'm going back with the translucent powders and actually apply under my eyes because using a concealer, it was not able to set itself. So for the result, it's going to shift and move and also have the potential of digging into your wrinkle, which is going to create a more of a crease under your eyes. Who need your eye primers when you have concealer? So I'm going to apply a little bit on top of the lid and using a beauty blender and then blending it out. This is going to cover any of your redness. Also, if you have blue veins, it's going to cover that up. Instead of using a translucent powder to set it, I'm going to use the eyeshadows. I want to keep this makeup as natural and simple as possible, that's why I'm going to select the lightest color from this palette and it's very natural to my skin tones and I'm using a large blending brush and apply all over my eyelid. Using a sweeping motions of back and forth and also swirling around just to be sure that it's well blended. Here's another method if you're not comfortable of using a eyeliner pencils or a liquid eyeliner. Just go ahead and use an angle brush dip in this dark brown colors right here. And I'm going to apply a strokes at the end of my eyebrows creating a wing line. Then I'm gradually going to fill it in once I have a perfect outline. Once I am happy with the shape, I'm just going to outline closely toward my eyelashes as possible. At the inner corner, when it gets harder, I'm just going to use a tapping motion and apply at the inner corner. This is my favorite technique, especially when I don't have enough time and want to have excellent, amazing eyeliners. This method here is effortless, but the result is really amazing and it looks super natural. To create a bigger eye illusion, I also want to outline on the bottom rims of my eye line. Instead of going all the way in toward the inner corner, I'm just going to stop in the mid sections. And I really want to concentrate majority of the colors on the outer corners. The next process, it is a must for me since I have such a short eyelashes. I want to apply a thin layer of eyelashes glue and I want to target closely toward my eyelashes as possible. And the best way to do this is looking down 45 degrees angle so you can really see the lashes line. And I like to press it inward toward my lash line so it can stay. And also I'm going to use my finger to press it in so my real eyelashes and my false eyelashes can be merged together. 
If you ever want to preserve your eyelashes and use it several times whenever using a mascara, always going to apply only at the root of the eyelashes, which is going to merge your real eyelashes into the false eyelashes instead of just applying all the way through because you don't want to saturate the false eyelashes with the mascara products because it's going to root in the shapes. With the limited additions of my bottom lashes, there's no way for me to apply mascaras without smearing all over the place. That's why I'm going to use the bottom of this tube to use as a guard and shield so I can target every strings of my bottom lashes. And by the way, I like to apply two layers, which means that I'm going to apply the first layer and wait for at least one minute. Then I'm going back with another layer on top to create a more volumized and lengthening lashes. I'm going to scope out my face using the Benefit Hoola bronzers. I'm just going to use an angle brush, tap out the excess before I'm going to apply it onto my face. But it seems that I accidentally applied too much, so I'm going to use a beauty blender to lighten up that area using a tapping motion. To create a perfect cheekbone, I'm going to start from the side of my ears and to meet at the end of my lips. And I'm just going to blend it back and forth at the tips of the brushes. I don't want to dig in too much and I want to keep the perfect form. Once I create a perfect outline, I'm going to blend it out those hard edge with a sweeping motions of back and forth. To create a perfect jawline, I'm also going to add some shadows right underneath my chin and I'm just using a back and forth motions, very similar to earlier. This is one of my favorite makeup techniques since it's adding some colors back into my face and also adding some dimension. I'm also going to contour my nose since I barely have any nose bridge. I'm going to concentrate toward the beginning of my eyebrows, creating the arch, and I'm going to really define that area. Next, I'm going to work on the bridge of my nose, so I'm going to go straight down, but also curve inward to create a taller nose. I will also apply the same method to the other side, making sure that both sides is going to be symmetrical. For the bridge, I'm also going to work on the tip of my nose, curving it inward. Additional step that I like to add is some shadows on the side of my nose, and this is going to create a small looking button nose. This is my favorite makeup technique of all time, is using a loose face powder paired with a beauty blender puff, and I'm going to refine the contour I did earlier, which is on my cheekbones. And this process here is called baking and I'm just going to leave it on for one to two minutes. I'm also going to bake alongside of the bridge of my nose to lighten up that area. Instead of waiting for one to two minutes, I'm also going to work another part of my face which is going to be my lips. I really enjoy a long lasting makeup that I don't need to touch up which is the Maybelline Super Stay Matte Ink. At first I'm going to apply the inner part of my lips and I'm just going to rub it back and forth and I'm going to press my lips together and also going to do the same thing on the upper lips. As you can see I have not tried to create a perfect outline for my lips yet because I'm going to do that with a Q-tips. I want to create an ombre effect which means that the darker color is going to be inners and gradually I'm going to apply on the outers as the lighter colors and I'm just dragging it out creating a perfect outline. The next I'm going to move in on to the upper part of my lips and as you can see I'm basically going to use the q-tips and guide my way creating a perfect shape. If you ever face with an intense colors of a liquid lipstick, you can always apply this method. It's using a q-tips and actually it's going to lighten up the colors. I like the colors to be more vibrant so I'm going to add into the second layer, do the same thing as earlier and I'm just going to draw at the inner part of my lips and then gradually press it in. So basically the colors on top and on the bottom is going to merge and apply the same technique of using a q-tips then gradually dragging the colors out to the outer part of my lips. After a good 1-2 to two minute, I'm going to use a dense foundation brush to actually dust off any of the chains with some powder that did not stay on top of my skin. I use a sweeping and also swarming motion to take off the excess. For the part of my nose bridge, I'm going to use a large blending brush and as you can see, I am dusting alongside of the nose and bringing the leftover translucent powders alongside under my eyes. 
For blushes, I definitely want to keep it natural and simple, so I'm going to use a Tarte Amazon Clay, and this is such a beautiful color. It is a little bit rosy, but not too much, and it's so perfect for everyday look, and I'm going to apply alongside of the apple of my cheeks. Instead of swooping alongside of the face, creating a horizontal line, I definitely want to swoop it up, and everything is going to be lifted, creating a natural and useful look. Really try to give it enough time to really try to blend out the blushes instead of having too much color packed in one place. And today I'm not going to use highlight because I just want to have a matte finish. To keep my makeup looking fresh all day, I'm going to apply Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray and apply a generous amount and at this time make sure you're not going to try to retouch your makeup in the process of drying. And at this stage, your makeup is going to last all day. It is wet proof and also waterproof. I hope you found this makeup tutorial helpful. Let me know if you are entering to middle school, high school, college or back to college. Comment down below and let me know how you feel about it because I really Remember when I had to go back to school, there's mixed feeling. I was really excited to see my friends and also all the organization and club that I was part of, but I was not really excited for the study and the homework because it's kind of boring. There's another two video waiting for you to click. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell for more notifications, and be part of the family. And also give this video a like. And as always, love yourself, stay motivated, peace out.